DXB. It's in the game. Hey guys, it's me Ben, back with another one of my patented off the cuff reviews. A few notes, no scripts, and me just chatting to you like I would if you were sat here with me and telling you about some video games. Now, first of all, I just wanted to mention that while I can totally acknowledge some of the problems that Watch Dogs 1 had, I actually really enjoyed my time with that game. Aiden Pierce was undoubtedly a poor protagonist. Um, you know, all style, no substance, no real motivation, not really a hacker. It didn't really work with the concept behind, behind Watch Dogs. Um, but here we are with Watch Dogs 2. And I'm happy to say a lot of things have been improved in this sequel. Uh, it's obviously available on Xbox One, which is what I'm reviewing on, but also PS4 and PC. Now, I think it's fair to say the biggest and most um, obvious improvement with Watch Dogs 2, right off the bat, are the characters. You're immediately introduced to your main character, Marcus, and thrown straight into the role of kind of clearing your name as a sort of um, test to see if you can join the hacking group DeadSec. And you immediately kind of realize that, you know, Marcus is a smart, resourceful guy, and these people that you're teaming up with in DeadSec are also smart, resourceful, funny, believable, well-written um, characters. Um, they are, yeah, it's really impressive, actually, how believable they feel and sound uh, at times they'll have conversations which just ring so true to a, a geek like myself you know when you were growing up those conversations about you know who's better Robocop or um, the Terminator or aliens or predators and stuff like that and those are the kind of things these guys will talk about while you're traveling around San Francisco San Francisco is the other big character in this game a big improvement over the setting of the first game which was Chicago San Francisco is colorful engaging full of culture and diversity and, and color and variety it's a really fun city to spend time in and spend time in with these this group wrench um the you know he's the standout your best buddy which you'll often hang out with and watch silly movie trailers and stuff like that and the rest of them they're just so well constructed uh and written and thought out and they avoid any kind of cliches or tropes with these characters the villain of the piece the main villain maybe you could argue was the most sort of trope heavy, you know, big big data, big corporation, evil guy in charge of Bloom. Um, but the game doesn't really focus on him. It's much more of a focus on you and your team and dealing with things as and when they arise in front of you. Now, obviously this is a Ubisoft open world game, so we have the sort of the tent poles of that concept. So you've got running and jumping, you've got, you know, shooting, you've got driving, uh, and you've got, you know, a big open world and a big map to get around and like I said San Francisco is a fun place that's really well realized uh, and is a really good place to experience and you know soak up that culture and those different elements it's full of you know the game is full of customization and different ways you can play it um, for example it's got weirdly some of the best clothing options I've ever seen in an open world game it avoids being ludicrous while absolutely giving you the freedom to dress Marcus however you want to reflect either what you're doing or what you're feeling at that moment or just you know you wanna you wanna try something different or you can just dress him like you would dress I mean there's a huge amount of selection in there and it was it was really really cool um, that there was so much well thought out fashion in this game that f seems to fit into a modern America into a modern San Francisco uh, obviously, the main thrust of Watch Dogs is kind of what you'd expect. You know, Dead Secret, this hacking group, which are very much like Anonymous, uh, and your goal is to overthrow big corporate sort of evil entities like Bloom and CTOS, these people that are using data and information to profile and subjugate the masses to control and to manipulate. Uh, and what that does is it means you're going to come up against, you know, various sort of faceless entities. But at times, there's lots of pop culture references throughout Watch Dogs 2. There's a sort of a Martin Screlly type character who you get to take down. Uh, and other things that, while I while are fun to play and experience right now, I can't help but be worried that in a few years' time, they're going to feel incredibly dated because these references are very much of the moment. Uh, but in a way, this, this big data question, this integrity about information, that is very much a current um, talking point, a current worry and concern for people in the world and you know who knows how that's going to end up, maybe in a few years that will feel just as irrelevant. Um, I definitely enjoy the driving and the shooting, the shooting's okay actually, I wouldn't say it's the greatest thing about the Watch Dogs 2 and I actually have a, a more fundamental problem with that, but the driving feels good, you know the handling of the vehicles they feel different and stuff depending on what you're driving around at the time um, and those mechanics that you had from the original Watch Dogs, the ability to hack on the fly, things like you know, gas mains and traffic lights, that's all still in the game, and that's fun and stuff to do when you're in a car chase. 
the the biggest little addition to the tool set and the mechanics that Marcus has in Watch Dogs 2 is the introduction of his drones. He has either a little wheel drone which can have physical interactions with um, various sort of computer uplinks or you have like a flying drone which is good for scouting ahead and yeah you can do some interactions with that as well. It really means that you can approach situations um, you know fully scouting out the environment and even like completely avoid contact entirely and that's where I have a big problem with this game. At early on you get to the your hacker base and you're introduced to a 3D printer. A 3D printer that can print guns. Guns covered in various wacky you know, paint jobs and stuff and that's great but they're still guns and you're still a hacker and you're given an assault rifle and shotguns and stuff and you can go out and just murder people. You can go out and spend you know, hours just killing people in the streets of San Francisco and it doesn't make sense. It makes no sense for your character that he would have training and the ability to use things like sniper rifles or be able to pick up a shotgun and wield it just, you know, completely like it was just walking down the street like anything normal. It, it's bonkers. While I can appreciate being able to hack things and cause mayhem, uh, you can call in like gang attacks or police to uh, uh, sort of arrest people and that's great. That's like dealing with situations from a slightly removed perspective. Now these things might end up in somebody being killed. But you're not killing them yourself, and that I can kind of justify and understand. But for Marcus, who is you know this young man who's been profiled incorrectly as a criminal threat, that's what starts the game off. That's what starts off his motivation to over, you know to sort of remove Bloom and deal with CTOS. For this for this young man to just pick up a machine gun and mow police down and mow security guards down and never bat an eyelid, never show any guilt, remorse any form of uh, sort of struggling to come to terms with this murderer that he's become, this mass murderer, this, this basically you're a terrorist. I mean, it, it's weird if you think about it, because what you're doing is you're dealing with taking down the established uh, government and the corporate hierarchies, which would be what a terrorist would do when they pick up a gun and shot, start shooting people. And yet, because you're doing this because you're anti-establishment and bringing power back to the people, you're meant to believe that Marcus and his gang at DedSec are sort of the, the righteous in this fact. And I, don't have, I find it a lot easier to grasp that and to understand that and get behind that if you didn't just kill everyone or have the option to kill everyone. Now, people will say, you don't have to do that. And you're absolutely correct. You can deal non-lethally throughout the game. You can use stun guns and everything such as that. But stun guns only put people to sleep for a little while and they'll get back up again and attack you again. And there are times when you do feel like you know, you're being completely swamped by enemies and you don't have any other choice but to pull a gun out. And deal with them lethally um you know and the option just being there doesn't feel right to me and it's a shame that you know ubisoft has to rely on those tropes and that's what we're going to get come back to here this game starts off incredibly well with a real strong sense of character of purpose of setting uh and, you know fun interactions fun stories but then it starts to sort of get bogged down in the ubisoft tropes while there are no towers and high points to get to and collect to open up the map which i was very thankful for there is definitely a structure and a formula that often involves go to a place, pick up a mission, go to a place, hack a thing, go to a place, then kill a guy or disable a guy and hack another thing. Uh, and I just feel like while they wrap things up in a fun enough story conceits with fun enough kind of characters and uh, plot devices and cameos from previous games and stuff like that, um, you know, you end up doing very similar things over and over again. Now, thankfully, Watch Dogs has a deep enough tool set that you can have quite a lot of emergent fun. Some of the best fun I had in this game would be just sitting in the street and like, you know, calling the cops on one person and calling the gangs on another person, watching the chaos unfold around me as gunfights erupt and, you know, being able to remote control cars so that they, you know, speed off in strange directions and, and make all the pedestrians confused and, you know, stuff like that. And, and I think as an open world experience from that regard, it, there is a lot of fun to be had there. I just feel like once the formula sets in with the stories and the side missions as you progress through the game, you know, it's an open world game, it's also peppered with side activities which often involve like point-to-point -point races or go-kart races or drone races or, or things like that. They're all a bit also rans. But I think Watch Dogs 2 mostly gets away with it, even if the formula does start to get a bit dull, because the setting and the characters are so much fun to spend time around that I just was drawn back to the game again and again and again. And I, I did enjoy my time as Marcus, dressing them up, like I would dress up a Barbie doll, you know, set him, him free into San Francisco to cause chaos, to hack with impunity. It is a fun game. It is a fun setting, and it's a vast improvement over Watch Dogs 1, even with the problems I have with the narrative dissonance that Marcus, this elite hacker, is also a commando that seems to be trained in the use of high-powered weaponry. Uh, and the scary idea that you could 3D print these guns and just take them out into the streets, it's a... Uh, 
It's a terrifying concept, and then one I hope does not become true or possible. So I think all in all, Watch Dogs 2 is great fun, uh, and I think it's a big, big improvement over that first game. So if you're looking for a big open world experience this time of year, with a slight sort of social bent, with lots of pop culture references, and you know, aim squarely at the geek market, with lots of tech references that feel well researched and well written, with believable characters, I definitely recommend Watch Dogs 2. And because of all that, I give it a very strong 4 out of 5 stars. BXB. It's in the game!